my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm for the forces drown and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, what fears are still when striving cease. My comfort. Welcome to Sunday morning worship for the United Church of Phelps and the Genius Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're joining us this morning. 
A few announcements. The big one that's been going out and going out and going out and I hope people are excited about is September 20th is Back to Church Sunday. So we will be having worship live here in the sanctuary um, and the protocols for doing that have been in the newsletter or will be in the newsletter. So looking forward to having all of you here on September 20th. Back to Church Sunday. Invite someone to come with you. We have... Um, the chicken barbecue coming up. Um, it's, unfortunately, it's past the deadline for you to order your chicken barbecue or pork steak barbecue. But for those of you that have ordered, just a reminder that that is on Saturday. And we have whale of a sale, and it is a whale of a sale. If you have been in the fellowship hall and in the lounge and in the hallways um, this week, you will see that it is a whale of a sale. Not just a whale of a sale, a whale of a sale. So come and um, participate in that. It's the last um, week of August. I think it's the 27th, 28th, and 29th. Let's center ourselves now on God as we listen to Kay play. ourselves to worship. Ever-present God, we thank you for calling us to meet with you today. We, we praise, praise you for coming to us long before, before we first came, came to you, you, for knowing who would be here today, today and, for and for knowing, knowing even our, our motives, motives for coming. For coming. By your spirit, lead and guide us during this service to help us hear you when you speak and to guide our responses with hearts and voices that rejoice in your presence. Our song is, um, God is Here.
No. Let's do the first three. The first three. Just the first. and prayer may we find in fuller measure what it is in Christ we share here as in the world around us all our varied skills and of the Spirit into open minds and hearts. Here are symbols to remind us of our lifelong need of grace. and pulpit hear the cross has central place here in honesty of preaching here in silence as in speech here in newness Spirit comes to each. Hear our children find a welcome in the shepherd's flock and fold. Here as bread and wine are taken. Christ sustains us as of old. Hear the servants of the servant seek in worship to explore what it means in daily Let us now come before God in a time of confession, speaking not only the words that are in your bulletin, but also from your heart in, in the time of silence. Let us pray. Wondrous God, who set sun and moons above us, mountains and valleys beneath us, and friends and strangers among us, how often have we tried to hide from your presence? How seldom have we looked for your creating face and your fashioning hand? You took upon yourself flesh of our flesh in Jesus our brother, and being found in human form, made the ultimate disclosure of yourself in the face of Jesus Christ. How often we have forgotten you, how seldom have we really loved and followed you. Wondrous God, who pours out freely the Holy Spirit, how often have we ignored your promptings, how seldom have we asked for your help or accepted your gifts. Lord, have mercy upon us. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Here are words you may trust, words that merit full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. To all who confess their sins and resolve to lead a new life, he says, your sins are forgiven. Come and follow me. Now to the one who rules all worlds, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, time to have a little fun. You ready? You got this one down? I don't. Do you? Yes, of course. We'll steal Christina's. I'm learning this song too with the kids. Yes, we're all learning this song. It's a cute song and we need to learn it. Barb knows it, so sing along with us. Butterfly song. Yeah. Sure, can you do it? See, there was a reason why you didn't have the music, because Barb knows it on the piano. Oh, good. Yep, there we go. You should come sing with us. Are the words somewhere? Well, sort of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> And you made me a child And I just thank you, Father, for making me me And I just thank everybody for stepping in Kay's learning the song, Anthony's learning the song And Barb played the piano, so thank you so very much so fun. I love that. Yes, the more that we have that do it, does it together, the funnier it is The funnier, whatever the word is, anyway Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity to gather in our various places to worship you and to hear your word and to um, try to be obedient to what we hear. Open our hearts and minds that we might hear what you want us to hear and help us to take it in the world and live it. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, this is the second week in our series on the book of Ruth. So chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2. Listen for the word of God to you. And a reminder that this book really is about family. And we'll talk about it that afterward. But pay attention to what happens with family in chapter 2. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. 
And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they called back. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, Whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, She is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have given me comfort and have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come over here, have some bread, and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, Even if she gathers among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. Rather, pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our kinsmen redeemers. Then Ruth the Moabitess said, he even said to me, stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with his girls because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the servant girls of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvests were finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. So last week, I believe at both services, both up at the park and, and the ones that we recorded, we talked a little bit about family and what the definition of family this day, these days is compared to the definition of family, perhaps when I was growing up, which was two pair, mom and dad, and two and a half kids. I don't know where the half, I still don't know where the half kid got to, but anyway, two and a half kids. In Ruth's day, family, it was very important that family included a male so that they could take care of the family. If you didn't have a male, you didn't have any way to feed yourself, to pay your bills, to do most anything. And so far in our story, nobody in Naomi's family has stepped forward to say, here I am, I'll make sure you have everything you need. It's been pretty quiet and they're probably getting a little bit hungry. And so Ruth says, let me go glean in the harvest wherever I can and whatever field will let me do that. 
Now, God has a sense of humor, does he not? God has, if you think back, God has provided for Naomi all the way from the beginning. Naomi and Elimelech went to Moab in order to get away from the famine. They went to Moab, which supposedly had lots of food to take care of them. And while they were there, Elimelech died. The sons married Moabite, Moabite girls. The two sons die, leaving the two Moabites and um, Naomi by themselves in a foreign land, for at least a foreign land for Naomi. And God provides back in Bethlehem, the hometown, with a plentiful harvest. And they start back, the three of them. Then Naomi decides, I better let them have a choice. I really shouldn't force them to come because I can't have kids to have them marry and have children with, um, sons at this point in my life. And she offers them the opportunity to go back to their parents. Orpah decided to go. Ruth, however, has decided that her family consists now of Naomi. That's the importance of family. Where would Naomi have been traveling all by herself between Moab and Bethlehem would have been a very dangerous thing for her to have attempted to do without having a male in her midst, in her party, um, because females just were not supposed to do things like that. They were at the whim of any male that came upon them. She gets Naomi back home, and now she's out gleaning, and what field does she happen to choose to glean in but a relative, and not just any relative, a kinsman redeemer, I think they call it, um, if I remember what I read right, a person who was male in the family who was in line to offer to take care of Naomi. Wow, this story has a lot of twists and turns in it. It could be um, a novel with a little bit more intrigue written in there. So, she's at Boaz's field. She doesn't know Boaz. She has no clue, but he says that she can go ahead and work and glean in the field, pick up all the leftovers in the field, and take them home to feed her mother-in-law. Not only that, but did you notice that he provides for her in other ways? He says, come and eat lunch with us. Drink any time you need to get a drink from the, from the jars of water that my servants have filled up for, for them to drink. And then sits down and makes sure she has more than enough food to eat at mealtime, so much so that she put the leftovers away in her pocket or something and takes them home to Naomi to offer them to her to eat for dinner. Now, little does she know that somewhere in the process here, at the, after um, Boaz knows who, who Ruth is, he tells his people who are picking the crop to intentionally leave some stalks of barley and wheat or whatever they're leaning, whatever they're harvesting, behind and not to make her be embarrassed for picking those up. He wants them to do that because he wants to make sure Naomi and Ruth are well taken care of. And why? Because he's heard that Ruth has left her homeland to stay with her mother-in-law, to come to a place where no one knows her, to worship a God who has, she has never been introduced to before, and to take care of her mother-in-law. We know that Boaz is a righteous man as well, because how does he greet his workers when he comes to the field? Wasn't it the Lord be with you? Something to that effect. So we know he really was a man of God. And there is a reason why God had Ruth at that particular field. It's all about family. Whether you define family broadly or narrowly, in this story and in our lives, it's all about family. Where would we be without our family? I was just telling some people that I had a phone call from my brother last night. I haven't heard from him in probably months at this point, I don't know. He calls very rarely. But anyway, it was good to hear him. It was good to hear his voice, to know that they are all well and that things are going good for them. No COVID-19 issues. Um, his firewood business is going well and that he can, I can support him by saying kudos to you, but he can also say to me, Ellen, how are things going? Are you okay? Hasn't always been that way with my brother and I, but it is now. Family, really important family. 
church family is really important too and that's why I'm so excited about September 20th because both Junius and the United Church of Phelps will be worshiping live in sanctuaries um, where I'll be able to see each other's eyeballs and be able to um, worship together and I will finally be able to preach to more than just a handful of people in the sanctuary and usually thank you Barb for sitting in the pews because usually they're empty pews that I'm preaching to and it's very hard to do that family is important so when we go through hard times when we have surgeries like Pat Pat has had her knee replaced um, this week and is doing well she counts on her church family as long along with her family family to keep her going and to keep her encouraged um, also Fred had surgery on Monday and he is also doing well and he depends upon us to keep him encouraged as well as his family also we need this bigger support and the sad thing about COVID-19 was we were not able to be together to support each other and say it's okay we'll get through this we've had to do a lot of things through zoom and through videotaping and it's been hard but you know what I bet that we are stronger now than we were when we first started this I bet we have learned how to use technology a little bit better and found that it isn't such a bad thing after all it served a purpose during this time and you don't have to sit here in the hot sweltering um, sanctuary like the rest of us like the few of us here in the in the church this afternoon are it's pretty warm in here right now family's important I want you to consider to think about family and I want to also ask you to remember your baptism because it was at your baptism that you became a part an official part of the family of God you were baptized in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and you were a, were recognized as a child of God whether you were this big or this big it doesn't matter um, same thing happens only have to be baptized once that makes you part of the broader community of faith that means that you also are um, family with Christians in Africa Christians in um, the East Christians in Europe Christians in South America Canada any which way you look anybody who's a Christian is part of your family and we as part of God's family are supposed to encourage and help and uphold uplift the other parts of our family which we are doing at both churches in different ways so think about family again this week think about what would you do without your family what would you do without your church family what would you do if you had nobody and thank God for the people you do have in your life who are willing to help you and take care of you think about it amen let us pray As we listen to the world's concerns Lord hear the cry of the oppressed and learn uh, and as we learn of new discoveries give us knowledge teach us to respond with maturity and give us courage to act with integrity may the spirit work in our human government for the welfare of the people for justice among the poor for mercy toward the prisoner and against inhuman oppression of humanity Help us to obey you above all rulers. Fill us with the patience of Christ as we wait upon the Spirit. We pray for the fruit of the Spirit of Christ, who works for peace on earth, commands us to love our enemies, and calls for patience among the nations. We hear the Spirit's call to love one another, opposing discrimination of race or sex, inviting us to ac accept one another and to share at every level in work and play in church and state in marriage and family and so to fulfill the love of Christ enable us to accept the, that call and be agents of renewals in our work through Jesus Christ our Lord hear us now as we lift our voices in the prayer which your son Jesus taught us saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final song is a really simple song. This is the day. Are we going to sing that through twice, Kay? We'll sing it through twice. No, too complicated. <laughs> This, this is, is the day, day this is, is the day, day that, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.